Hey guys, this is Kevin Yan again. Uh, right now. It has been more than three years since I posted the last video. And recently I just came back to YouTube to look at the comments uh, people left. Uh, first of all, I really want to thank all the uh, the viewers of mine and those who left the comments who really give me inspirations to do further videos. So thank you for all. To answer the question of what kind of people that financial engineering master's program really are looking for, and if you're really looking to study into this program, what kind of skills you should have. So first, uh, I want to make a disclaimer that I only attended one Master's of Financial Engineering program, which is uh, the program at UC Berkeley. So this uh, video doesn't cover the requirement for other programs. And for this video, I know I'm not certainly not the best looking Asian guy you can find. So I'm just going to uh, not going to show my face. I'm going to show you some slides. Hopefully, uh, I can have more views and less dislikes. So first of all, you would have an undergraduate study. Uh, if you want to consider a master's program, you want to finish a four-year undergraduate program, preferably in some analytical subjects. So for example, if you major in statistics or mathematics or computer science, that would be a good plus. But if you study something like economics, you want to make sure you have a strong analytical background. You want to take courses in uh, advanced mathematics, for example, not just calculus, but also, uh, for example, partial differential equations, numerical analysis, and some linear algebra, introduction to uh, probability theory, to statistical modeling. That's where you want to, to study because in a financial engineering program, there is a lot of math. And the second thing you want to look for is some programming background. So if you're a computer science major, that's good. If you haven't uh, majored in computer science, you might consider taking a course in uh, C++, for example. Right? You can take courses in Java or Python or any other uh, programming languages that will be a plus. A lot of people ask is, should I take CFA? My answer is CFA is not a necessity, but it's definitely a plus. So if you have a CFA level one, two, or, or even level three, that's going to be a plus in your profile. Especially for people who doesn't have a financial background, I think getting a CFA actually shows them that you have an interest in finance. You must have some kind of financial experiences. By means of that, I mean either you work in finance before, that means you graduate from your undergraduate study, you work some years in finance and you want to further that financial knowledge. But if you haven't have any exposure in finance, I strongly recommend you to uh, find a financial internship, like an internship in a bank, in an asset management firm, in a trading firm, or insurance company will be helpful. Next is your uh, GRE scores. So I think it's necessary to have a GRE or GMAT score. So you want to make sure that the, the mathematics score in your GRE exam is as high as possible. I think it's almost imperative to have a full mark in your GRE analytical scores. In addition, for the foreigners you know, whose native language is English, you want to make sure you have a good English communication skills because in my program, there is actually an interview where they talk to you in English to see how, you, how well you can communicate. Next is your recommendation letters. I, I recommend you have at least one recommendation letter from a mathematic professor or statistical professor that tells them that you have a very good analytical skills. Now, for racial diversity, I know uh, having said all those analytical stuff, people are saying, you know, all the Asian people are very good at it. I think it's true to some extent which means you will have a lot of Chinese or Indian people in, in financial engineering program. So if you're racially underrepresented and add to the diversity, I think you may have a plus. But I can't say for sure because I'm not a person making that decision. Another one I want to emphasize is brain teasers. So in an interview, they may ask you some brain teasing questions. For example, there are two people, one tells the truth, one always tells a lie. How can you tell who is who by just asking them one question? So that's an example of brain tissue you want to prepare. There's actually some books on it. I think it will be helpful. Uh, lastly, for personality-wise, if you are interested in using complex models, you use financial analysis to solve problems, you are very good. If you're interested in programming, using mathematics, very analytical guy, you are good. 
On the other hand, this program is by no means a uh, academic program. It is a professional program, which means you're ultimately going to look for jobs, which means in the environment can be a little bit competitive. So if if you are like very academic or want to be a professor, that's probably not the environment you're looking for. You want to be competitive as well. So in the end, if your passion is to use models to solve real-world financial problems, and if you want to understand what people can do using the power of financial engineering, the good and bad of it, and how it applies to the real world, then definitely go for it. So that summarizes my video. If you like it, click on subscribe below, and I will have more videos posted for you in the future. Thank you.